Hi, Mr. Franklin. Just finishing up this last Melville mystery. I didn't get a chance the other day. All right, now, what are you doing here? Well, I'm waiting for you. I happen to be in the neighborhood. Well, you're so... always in the neighborhood. And you tell me what right you've got to keep those movers out of this office? Oh, listen, I'm sorry about that. It's just, you know what I thought? I thought you and I should talk alone. You and I have nothing to talk about. Yes, we do, Mr. Franklin. We have something to talk about. I'm here to arrest you for the murder of your partner. What? Now, it's my duty to inform you of your constitutional rights. Oh, you cut that drivel. I've written that stuff so many times, I know it by heart. And what is this nonsense? You're going to arrest me. Come on, Mr. Franklin. Why don't you make a statement and save us both a lot of trouble? You know, I've really got you. All right, Lieutenant. You got me. I'm your prisoner here. Clamp the irons on me. But you want to give me a dime first so I can phone my attorney? Because I promise you I'm going to sue you and your department for false arrest and defamation of character. I kind of knew it right from the start. It was nothing definite. It was a lot of little things. Little things. Driving back from San Diego on the day of the murder instead of taking a plane. The open mail. Never showing any genuine emotion for a man that you worked with for 10 years. <laughs> with that, you know what they're going to do? They're going to laugh you right out of court. But they're not going to laugh at the insurance policy, are they? I've got a photostatic copy of it here in my pocket. They're going to laugh at the fact that you withdrew $15,000, put it back the next day. I've got the book that you gave to Miss Lasanka with your signature in it. You expect to get a true bill of indictment on that trivia? Come on, Lieutenant. I was down in San Diego. So was your partner. That's a provocative statement. Can you prove that? Yes. Not with the witness, because you killed the witness. But I got another way to prove it. Will you enlighten me? I must say I enjoy watching a man raise without any cards in his hand. You know what, Ken? I'm going to tell you the truth. For a while there, I never thought I was going to get you. Believe me, you had me going in such circles, I couldn't figure it out. Suddenly, I thought of something. How clever that first murder was. The foam gimmick, working late in the office. Brilliant. Are you awarding gold medals today? Yes, for the first one, not for the second one. That was sloppy. Mrs. Melville, she'd have been very disappointed. Well, come on, get to the climax, Lieutenant. You're talking to a writer. Am I? That's not what I heard. And that's the key, that you're not a writer. When Mrs. Ferris told me that you didn't contribute to the writing, that her husband did all the work. That's a lie. I had to say to myself, how could a man with no talent for mysteries make up such a clever murder? If he were that genius, you'd be able to write your own books. Go ahead, I'm fascinated, as boring as it may be. Then I got it. The first one, the clever one, that wasn't yours. The second one, the sloppy one, that was yours. But not the first. Oh, and whose idea was that, then? Your partner's. Had to be. And his wife told me how conscientious he was. You know, the way he used to write down his ideas on every odd scrap of paper, backs of matches, whatever ah, it was. Ah, ah, so that's why you wouldn't let the movies in. Well, I had to rummage around here before they emptied everything out. Is this your partner's handwriting? Well, I think I can prove it is. Maybe I ought to read this to you. Idea for a Melville book, perfect alibi. A wants to kill B. Drives B to a remote house and has him call his wife in city. Tells her he's working late at the office. Bang, bang. Sound familiar? That's the plot you used. Practically word for word. Should I read some more? No. Officer? With this, I think I got a conviction, don't you? You gotta admit I had you going for a while now, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> you want to know the irony of all of it? That is my idea. Only a really good one I ever had. I must have told it to Jim over five years ago. Whoever thought that idiot would write it down? Rusty, what's going on? I'm sorry, sir. I apologize. 
this is un... But you knew this was my opening night. You're right, sir. This isn't true. No, 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 no. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sue your ass. You're not going to sue because... Kevin, get him foolish. out of my club. No, it's foolish. Get out of my club. Yes, I... Where the hell is it? Got it right here. I got a warrant. Here it is. I'm sorry? I have a warrant. Uh, take this up to Mr. Price, will you? It's an extra copy, sir. You can keep it. Uh, just so you folks understand, we'll be here 10, 15 minutes working on a missing persons. If you want to stay, you're welcome, but you got to be quiet. Uh, Mr. Price, oh, almost forgot. This is a fabulous club. And this man is responsible for it. This is all his vision here. This is his design. And I think we all owe him a big hand. Uh, Mr. Price, I wonder if Miss Farrell would join us. I think she'll be interested in this, too. Uh, Miss Farrell, uh, you recall, sir, I dropped by earlier today. I had the photo of Tony Galper. Yes, yes, I remember. Okay. Uh, do you remember when I was leaving? You know, I got over here just about with the fish. What are these fish called again? Koi. Koi, right. Magnificent. Creatures. The different shapes and the different colors. And look at that guy there. Look at that orange. Isn't that fantastic? Anyway, they caught my eye, and I noticed that there were 14 of them. And now I was going this way, and uh, I'm sorry. And another color caught my eye, but in this tank, sir, I noticed there were only nine fish. Each one more beautiful than the other, but only nine. So when I got over here, I was struck. Because there's 14 here, just like the... Please! Please tell me this nonsense has something to do with obtaining a warrant. Oh, absolutely. Let me tell you something. I got a nephew. He works in that zoo down in San Diego, the one with the big whale. And he tells me there's a rule for fish tanks. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. But he tells me that for every inch of fish in the tank, you got to have one gallon of water. So if you have two goldfish, each of them one inch, that's a total of two inches, you got to have two gallons of water. Don't ask me who comes up with this stuff. That I don't know, but that's what he told me. And the judge, he had it checked out, and it's true. So, uh, Junior, can we get these two things here? It has to do, sir, with waste and filtrations, things that I don't understand. So what this all means is, the more fish you got, the more water you need. Ah, about four feet. So this tank has 14 fish and it's about four feet deep. This is ridiculous, Colombo, even for you. Yeah, but I'm not finished. You see, with this formula, and this is the part that really got my attention, it follows. The less space you have, the less fish you can keep. Now, in this tank here, we only got nine fish. Yeah, about two feet. This tank is only two feet deep. That's why it's only got nine fish. Less space, less fish. Uh, Mr. Kaufman, am I holding you up? All right, come on, get started. Work right here on the nine fish tank. This is only going to take a minute. You see, I'm not sure what happened to Tony Galper, but he is missing. And I was just thinking, hypothetically, if something did happen to him, and somehow, Miss Farrell, you happened to be involved, well, you knew the people that Tony was associated with. You had to assume if they found out, they'd probably kill you. Again, mind you, I'm just talking hypothetically. And you, Mr. Price, you had a lot of riding on Tony's investment in this club, and this place meant a great deal to you. So say something did happen to him. In order to ensure the receipt of his money, you would have needed to help Miss Farrell cover it up. Got it, Lieutenant. OK, go. That device, it's actually called, what is it again? Ground penetrating radar device, sir. Right. Amazing instrument.
So you buried them right here, right under that tank. And appropriately enough, with the fishes, as they say. This place really could have been something. Too bad. Good evening, Mr. Price, Miss Farrell. 